Hey there. Welcome to the Chauvin's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that red button and stick around a while. Now let's get crafting. I really enjoy working with clay, but at the moment I have a really hard time kneading it with my hands. So I decided to try something different using the IOD clay molds that I have. I wanted to see if I could still get the same effect just using hot glue. And you know what? You can. I've got my hot glue gun set on high and I just make sure that I push enough in there and work very slowly so everything gets filled in. So I'm going to do these two small ones down at the bottom on this mold and I have some other floral ones that I'm going to do on the other mold. The glue in these molds is now dry and you can see how easy they pop out of the mold. I did try using this technique with some of my other molds, but if they're too deep, they don't come out and then you have too much cleanup to do. Now I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to add part of this garland. I'm going to make four of them because I'm going to be doing the same pattern twice on the project that I'm going to show you shortly. So I've had this tray for a really long time and it has the hearts on it like this. And for the longest time, I thought, you know what? I love the tray. I think it's really sweet. It was only $5 at the thrift store, but I don't like the hearts. But now I'm going to take the hearts and I'm going to do something to incorporate all of this and make it look French country. And I think that's going to turn out awesome. Now I'm going to create a design using all of the hot glue molds that I just did. And this is going to be right around the heart, which will incorporate it into the design. Using hot glue, I'm going to apply all of these molds onto this wood crate, and then I'll repeat the steps for the other side. You will notice that not all of the molds are the perfect shape or size, and some of them have a little bit of a different outline, and that doesn't matter to me. I mean, I could have made it perfect, but you guys know me. I'm all about rustic, and if it's imperfect, I love it even more. Before I added anything to the crate, I did wipe it down and make sure that it was completely dry and full of debris. And what I'm doing now is just taking my white chalk paint, I've put it in a little cup and diluted it with some water because I want this to be a whitewashed effect. I just want to lighten up the wood a little bit. It's really dark on one side and then not dark on the other side. So I thought just creating a whitewash over it would just bring bring all of the colors together and make it look a little bit more distressed and a little bit more French country. Once I have the paint on in sections, I'm going to just wipe it off with a paper towel. And if I want to do another layer, I can. But I ended up just doing one layer of this. It turned out perfect and lightened it up just the right amount for what I was looking for. Now I need to do something with the molds. I don't want to leave them this sort of white grayish color. So I'm taking a small brush and my white chalk paint and I'm going to give them one coat. I'm going to cover everything, the sides, all of that with the chalk paint. It's not going to be full coverage, but I'm doing a technique on top of it so you won't even notice that. I wanted the embellishments to be kind of similar and blend in with the whitewashed wood that I have. So I'm taking a small chip brush and a tan colored 
just an acrylic paint. It doesn't matter. Whatever kind you have will work. And what I'm doing is just dry brushing over the top. And I do apologize for the shadow that my hand is making. I think I was doing this at night. Anyway, you can kind of see that it's just highlighting all of the top areas. You could as well do a wax with this if you wanted to have the wax go into the crevices and then just wipe off the excess on the top. I'm just doing it the easy way and just dry brushing it on top. This is one of my wood shelves. I'm gonna look in here. I think I have a napkin holder in here somewhere. These are just some, oh yeah, here it is. So I've got this old napkin holder. I used to have a pig on it, but now I took that off and I'm gonna redo this into something French country for the kitchen. I think this is gonna be perfect. The first thing to do with this is just sand down all of the edges where it's kind of rough. So I think I had a mold on here, a clay mold, if I'm not mistaken. So there's just a little bit of some paint kind of on the edges, and I just want to clean that up a bit. I know it already has white paint on it, but I do need to cover up this design and the pig on the other side. So I'm going to give the whole thing a few coats of white chalk paint just to freshen it up. It does have a few scratches here and there from just being in my stash. So that will just make it look brand new. I created a printable that I just printed off on regular computer paper. I found that there were a couple of stains coming through on the wood from the napkin holder. So I thought rather than using tissue paper, I would just use regular printer paper. This will be available on my website as a free printable for all of you. It's some a French letter in the background and then a design of some black and white peonies. Because this paper is thicker, I'm going to be using Mod Podge. I still don't want a huge amount on the paper itself. So I'm just going to be very careful in how much I put on because regular paper can also wrinkle and get ugly. Now, I haven't tried the letting the Mod Podge dry and then using an iron to reactivate it and get out all the wrinkles. I'm hoping that I remember for my next project when I do a decoupage that I'll do that because I really want to see if that makes a difference. Anyhow, I'm just going to put the Mod Podge on and then I'll place down my design and then just let it dry, smooth it down as best I can, and then I'll be sanding off the excess edges. this will be used in the kitchen and it's going to get people touching it and maybe even some of the oils and things from the kitchen when you're cooking. I'm going to be giving it a couple of coats of this clear Rust-Oleum finish. This is a semi-gloss. That's all I happen to have on hand. I probably would have preferred it to be matte, but this will do just fine. You could also give it a couple of coats of Mod Podge and that would seal in the finish too. This frame I got at a yard sale a couple of years ago. Of course, yes, it was in my stash and I had both of them. I did one something with the other one. I can't remember what, but I'm going to use this one for the French country because it's got the cute little design on the edges. Now the glass doesn't come out of this one, so I'm going to just use some painter's tape and mask it off so I don't make a mess. The paint color I chose to use for this frame is my favorite one. It's called Mushroom, and I know a lot of you out there love it as well. So what I did was go to my Amazon store, and I found a bunch of different brand names of 
paint that are in this color family. Now, some of them might be light over, some of them might be darker, but it's basically either a light tan or a linen color. So it's a cross between a gray and a beige. I call it grayish. And I'm using the pointed sash brush from Stylemeister. I would love these brushes because you can use any type of paint on them and they wash up so easily. I'm going to give this a couple of coats. I'm not going to worry about that black velvet on the back. I don't think you'll be able to see the back anyway most of the time when the frame is standing up or if you place it on a wall, you won't see the back. So that doesn't concern me in the least. But if that bugs you, then go ahead and mask off the back too. I'm using some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna be going pretty heavily around the corners here. I want some of that gold to come back and I'm also going to do it on all of the raised ridges that you see on the frame. So there's a couple on the outside edge and then there's the three or four on the inside of the frame right next to the glass. This is a graphic that I found on pixabay.com. I will have it on my website as a free printable for you. And I just sized it to the frame that I needed and then just printed it off again on regular printer paper. I simply placed it in the back of the frame, closed it up, and then I noticed that something was missing off of this piece. It looked a little too plain. I did like the distressing of it, of the little bit of the gold coming out, but the big part of the frame just looked a little bland. So I'm gonna take a small little chip brush and some black paint, and I'm gonna dry brush just a little bit over the whole piece. And I really think that brought the graphic and the frame all together as one. It's a small detail, but I think it made a world of difference. At least for me, it did. Salt and pepper shakers. Could you do something with those? I've got these two. I have already painted them once. They're actually not good for use because the bottoms are all gone. Okay, let's grab those two. Since the shakers are not useful anymore, they're just going to be for display, I can basically do anything I want with them. I had the idea to paint them and then give them a shiny overspray afterwards to make them look ceramic and have some kind of French country design on them. I ended up playing around with a few different things, but this is eventually what I came up with to do. Once the shakers had two coats of white chalk paint, I printed off this design on tissue paper. And if you're curious to know how I print on tissue paper, I have a full tutorial listed in my description box, which will take you through everything step by step. I got this design off of Pixabay and I just recolored it. It used to be black and white and I made it sort of a brownish sepia tone. And this is what I'm going to use to put on the shakers as a design right in the center. I'm using Mod Podge to apply the little pieces of tissue paper and I decided to go up and down. I thought that would be something a little more unique, something that you haven't seen. And what I needed to do was just make sure that I centered it really well and then used my fingers to press it down in the center first and then I just smoothed it out along the edges. I didn't go over these with Mod Podge on top because I'm going to end up spraying them with the clear gloss at the end and then that will seal everything in. I'm using the same tan color that was from the first project and I'm going to paint the bottom, go all the way up through the groove to that very top line there where it starts to curve in. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit on the top too. I thought that would just bring all of this together.
To finish off the look, I found these two small wooden beads that are almost the same color as the tan paint, and I'm going to add them to the top of each of the shakers. Now, you guys will have to let me know what you think of this design, this project. Sometimes you have an idea in your head, and when it comes to executing it, it doesn't always turn out the way you want, and that's what this project is for me. So I'd love to hear how you would make over these shakers. As I was putting together the vignette, I tried to make these projects kind of all fit in together. I needed a little bit of a filler. So I found this purple candle and I printed off just a little design that I found on Pixabay. And I'm gonna just use a glue stick and then put it onto the candle creating my own label. This is a super easy project that you can do just to upcycle any type of candle and make it fit into your decor. Don't forget all of the printables will be available on my website. Let's take a look at how I styled this on my kitchen counter. I hope you enjoyed these projects. They're a little different from what I normally do on this channel, but I'd like to try new things. If there's something that you would like me to try for you, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.